Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to my channel. Um, if you haven't been to the channel before, uh, this is all about my bucket list, hopefully your love it list. Um, I'm just doing things that I love and, you know, for a lot of different reasons. But, um, you know, I started something called Life After Wife, where after I got divorced, I started doing some things that I had never done when I was married. And then in May of this year, actually last year, I had a major health situation that happened. And after that, I started doing some more things that were on my list. And so I just, you know, keep living my best life. So if you are all about living your best life or just wanting to find out like a little bit more about something maybe that I've done or that you're thinking about doing, let me know because I will give you all the details because if you are an explorer wanting to know more, I am the channel. So um, if you haven't already, then go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can find out about more videos. Um, <clears throat> oh my gosh, sorry, it's late. <clears throat> oh my gosh, it's late here. So I promised to come back and do a quick video about, yes, one of my favorite subjects right now, um, Viking cruises. And this is all about food. So um, if you guys wanna know about the food and my review of the food on the cruise, tune in, this is the right video for you. And if you haven't already linked um, or liked and subscribed to the channel, please do. I have some really, really good content coming up. It's going to talk about um, Vedanta properties, how you can stay for an entire week for less than, really less than like $600 an entire week. Beautiful property. I'm going to talk about that in an upcoming video. And then I'll also have um, a tour of the property, a tour of the suites coming up and want to talk to you about that. Um... If you've ever thought about going to Bali, I'm going to talk to you about my trip to Bali and just a lot of good things. So subscribe and let's get some of the questions out of the way. So I want to just give you guys a quick overview about my opinions of the food and some of the questions I had beforehand and what I felt like after I went on my trip. So I am a foodie. You guys know me by now. I really, and when I say foodie, like I don't really truly call myself that but my mom said over the holiday she's like I don't know where you got your palate from because like we're from I mean we're just from a small area outside of Dallas but I really realized that we go to a lot of places a lot of places that people haven't gone to yet and so I really like to have food experiences and I really don't like chains so if you follow me on um, this channel or Instagram, I'm always just putting different places that I'm going to eat. So I say that as the backstory because when I saw the number of restaurants or the number of food options on the cruise, at first I thought, this is not enough. This, you know, I saw that there were like three or four restaurants. And so if you're the person that just saw that or got your itinerary, or if you're looking at the, um, the options, how many of you guys are thinking, I don't think this is going to cut it. If I'm on a nine day cruise and there's three restaurants to choose from, it's just feeling like it's going to be repetitive. You're going to be eating chicken strips, you know, by day three. Um, so that was the feeling I had, um, on the front end. The other thing I was wondering about is, um, am I going to have these like 6 15 times and I have to like leave an excursion you know I'm in the middle of like sailing or something and I have to get back to the boat for some you know 6 15 um time and am I gonna have to sit with a big group of people like I think I am um I am I don't know what they call it an ambivert I don't know that may not be it but I'm an introvert and an extrovert I want to be around people but on my own time and on my own terms. So the idea of having dinner with a group of 12 or 15 people I don't know every night, not my idea of fun. So those were some of the key questions, concerns, um, panic attack, 
little panic attack I had going into the cruise. So did I have um, a major, major disappointment moment? Um, did I have a panic attack? Was the food good? I'm just going to jump ahead. Oh my goodness. It really healed my trust issues. So going on the trip and having the food come out the way it did, it really, really fixed my food trust issues. And I'd like to tell you why. So for us, we did have, I didn't mention this on um, any of my videos, but I should have. With certain um, with certain levels of cabin bookings, you do get to book things earlier on the cruise. So for the level we were at, you know, I don't know, we got to book at like 60 days out and then at different levels, it's 90 days, whatever. And I was really thinking, oh my goodness, I have to have this privilege of being able to book early and I know this sounds crazy to you guys. Y'all can put it in the comments. It may sound really like first world, but it, I know, right? I'm that person. But um, we did. I was the person who had it on the calendar when it popped up and it was time to start to book things. I was booking and that's 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 who I, who I am. So we were able to get four, let's see. No, I think we were able to get three guaranteed restaurant spots. The way it works is like this. Here's the breakdown. There is a place on the cruise. It's called the restaurant. You don't have to have a reservation there. It's open seating for all the meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, but they do have the chef's table and they have Manfredi's. Those are the only two restaurants that you need to have a reservation in advance. But what they don't tell you is that they really only book or set aside 40% of the seatings for the reservations because Viking and the reason why people love Viking is they are about the experience. And so if you don't get the reservation booked before you get on that boat. Don't fret. Don't panic. Don't think that your entire trip is over. Don't think that you're going to have a food um, misery because um, they will accommodate you as much as you possibly can be accommodated once you are on the boat. So Manfredi's is the Italian restaurant and the chef's table is the other restaurant that you take make reservations. Let me tell you about the very first thing I experienced. The chef's table is amazing. That is amazing. What I love about it is it's a five course meal. It's a set menu. So they have a set menu, which again, my very first thought is so limited. I don't want a set menu, right? I shouldn't say it like that. I probably sound like a brat. But what I really liked about it is you make a lot of choices on vacation. You're making choices about excursions. You're making choices about, are you going to wake up at eight o'clock in the morning or one? You're, you know, or am I going to the spa? Like these are big decisions. So when you get to dinner, it is nice to not have to make any decisions about what you want on the menu when you go to the chef's table. I found that the menu was amazing. And it gave me a chance to try some things I probably wouldn't have tried. The other thing that's really nice about it that I didn't expect was that they do have a hint of local cuisine so that if you choose to still have your meal on the boat versus um, being out in the city, and usually you are, you're departing before six o'clock, so you kind of only had the option of eating on the boat, um, there is a nod to the local cuisine. So there will be a Greek dish or there will be, um, you know, something that will be very, um, aligned with the city cuisine, but there will be four other courses and everything is also paired with wine. So it's a very nice, very nice dinner. Um, the, beautiful thing about it is the menu changes every third day. So if you are making a reservation and you're thinking, I want to be at the chef's table every night, 
you saw my other videos about how to maximize on your money that you're spending. So you're like, I want to have a $400 dinner every night. If you do, um, unless you just love the menu the first night and want to have it again, I would suggest that you make your reservations with spacing in between because the menu at the chef's table changes every third day. What I like about that is it gives you the feeling of two additional restaurants. So my suggestion is make make a reservation at Manfredi's maybe the first night, um, the third night, and you know your last night. So that's kind of what we did. Um, and then we have, I'm sorry, did I say Manfredi's? I meant the chef's table. So let's talk about Manfredi's, which is the Italian restaurant. Absolutely amazing. I think I'm saying that a lot, but it really was a great, um, a great option. Um, their menu does not change, but one of the things that I really um, liked about it is, let's be honest, is that after you've had all the other options, you need a good pasta. And knowing that you can count on a good pasta or a good Italian restaurant once or twice during your stay for us just worked out to be absolutely perfect. Um, they also had the um, Sabuco, which was kind of like a lamb shank. Um, they had something similar to it at the chef's table, but um, I believe it's on the menu every night at Manfredi's. So you do have an option of a nice meat as well as a, a pasta. So for us, um, we decided on the night that we had the Italian restaurant that because you can basically eat whatever you'd like, we were able to get the lamb shank, a pasta dish as well, and made it kind of like a little, I don't know, it's not a surf and turf, but it was just a great option. So let's talk about the restaurant. So, um, when you're not making your uh, reservations in the uh, reservation only restaurants, you're probably like, oh, well, this is like the consolation prize restaurant. It's just where you go if you can't get in at the other places. I bid you not. No, um, it's really actually not that at all. Um, what I found was a couple of fun things. So um, first, there was a lobster night that wasn't advertised or discussed. They didn't mention it anywhere. But all of a sudden, um, a few people told us that, oh, you know, tonight's going to be lobster night at the restaurant. And I believe we actually had a reservation that night and we moved it around because who wouldn't want lobster? And what I really loved about this, this was not casino lobster night. This wasn't like, oh, go get one little lobster. They were huge lobster tails, already halved, drawn butter, unlimited. I couldn't even eat enough lobster. I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't even eat any more lobster. So it was amazing along with all of the salad bar and everything that you normally would expect. But the restaurant is your go-to restaurant that it, you can have um, breakfast every day, uh, lunch every day, and of course, dinner every night. Um, they do have the staple things that you're going to want to have, you know, like coffee and ice cream. So look for the ice cream, the gelato. They mix up the uh, flavors each day. They keep a few of the, the simple ones that you're going to want to see like your um like your cinnamon vanilla ice cream or like a mexican vanilla so all of that they keep but the restaurants are exceptional and the restaurant mixes up their breakfast and so it does keep it really fresh so you won't feel like you're getting like pizza and chicken tenders but let's say you do need some chicken tenders um a real shocker was that they do have the winter garden and a pool bar um and you pool bar restaurant and when i say pool bar please don't think about flip-flops wet hair standing there with your little red and white checkered boat trying to get a corny dog that's not really what we're doing here it's a really cute little area next to an indoor infinity pool so um don't think you're gonna you know show up in your in your flip-flops but if you just are looking for the basics, really well done. They have the chili dogs, some hamburgers, 
wings and things like that, but still done on a nice plate with a nice glass. Very well done. But it gives you a chance just to get some regular food. Have you ever been on vacation and you're like, can I just get McDonald's? <laughs> so it just gives you a chance to get some regular food. But we did do that once and um, it was really good as well. So one of the things that you want to try, even if you're a guy and you're thinking, I don't really like high tea and what am I going to go and have tea um, for? Not really my deal. I don't like finger foods. Really, really recommend it. It really gives you the option of another restaurant experience. It's every day, I think around three o'clock and um, the tea is served on like the three tiered trays with different teas. But it also comes with a um, an assortment of sandwiches and scones and different desserts um, as well. And it's really good. I mean, if you're just looking for like a little something in between, I definitely recommend doing it at least once. I mean, I did it a couple of times. I love it. I've gone to other places where that experience would cost you $80 a person. I just think it's a great a great thing and it's a nice way to have a sandwich without going to the restaurant and it breaks it up and then the last um, thing that I'll just touch on is um, well actually I have a couple of more so you may not know but you will want to look for um, a sushi bar that they have right near the Explorers Lounge where people usually have drinks and do trivia but just in the walkthrough passage area there there is a person that's there and they just roll sushi and have sandwiches and charcuterie boards, little small ones that are just nice little handheld things too. So it gives you a chance to really explore a lot of different things and put a good food vibe together. And last but not least, room service. I would say room service, it, it could really benefit from having a change of menu during your stay. That is one feedback that I would give is that the menu was pretty good, but if you want to have a few different nights that you order room service, it is a bit limiting, but the items that were available, I will say I give a thumbs up. And we did try everything on the menu and we will say that um, everything did deserve a thumbs up. So chili dogs, really well done, grated cheese, couture hot dog, you know, toasted bun. Um, everything was really well done in room service menu, but I will say it was just slightly limiting. And if you plan to stay in your room and order room service every single day, I would say probably not going to work for you unless you're like some of my friends who can eat chicken tenders or um, buttered pasta every single day. So if that's you, then room service probably can work. Um, but anyway, overall, I would give the food an eight and a half or a nine out of 10. The only reason that I'm pushing some of my review down is because the room service, I think, could be a little more extensive and possibly it would be a great thing if they changed the menu out every few days. But other than that, bon appetit and don't forget to subscribe so that we can stay connected on how we are living our best life. Thanks.